In this video, I'm going to talk about using tabs, especially in a situation like a menu. So I have some text here on the screen, and first I'm going to show you how this has been formatted. So I've got paragraph styles set up. So I've got one for the item name, I have one for the description, and then this because it's on the same line and therefore in the same paragraph as the item name, I've got the price as a character style because character styles are exceptions. So when I copied this information in, all of the prices were like this after the description. And as you can see, there's a bit of a problem with some descriptions being longer than others. So in order to simplify and kind of reorganize some possibly unordered space, I started moving them all to be on the same line as the item name. So here you can see the price started out here and I moved it to the top. So I'm just going to keep cleaning those up. And looks like I forgot one there. So this market price one can come up, and this one. So now that I have everything built in, now that I have everything in the right place, I'm going to turn on my hidden character. So on a Mac, that's Option Command I. You can also find it in Type, and then Hide or in Show Hidden Characters. So I turn this on just to show that if I'm going to insert tabs, I have to use the tab key. So I'm going to zoom in real close here on my first one. And you can see that it's showing me the spaces. So it's showing me hidden characters. All I've got spaces. I've got the paragraph break. And that's it. So I need to instead of a space, have a tab. So I'm just going to highlight that and press my tab key and you'll see that the symbol is different. So I need to go down through and insert a tab between the item name and the price for each item. So sometimes it's going to show up funny and that's fine. So since we haven't told the tab what size to be, it defaults to I think about every half inch. So here it almost looks like the symbol overlaps. We will fix that in our next step. So I can set tabs to send these prices all to be right aligned in a couple of ways. So I'm going to show you how to do it outside of paragraph styles first and then where to do those same settings inside the paragraph styles. So the first thing I want to make sure I do is that I'm in a correct line for this to happen and it has to be in a line with the tab. So I only have tabs in these lines so they're only in the places I need them. Your text may be more complex you might have different tabs to set in which case you definitely want to do them only in the context of paragraph styles. So I can actually highlight and hit all these lines and because there's only a tab in the lines where there need to be one, I'm not going to affect these description lines where there's not a tab. If you haven't typed a tab key, nothing's going to be changed if you set a tab because it's got nothing to refer to. So I'm just going to do a quick highlight there, hit every line, and then on a Mac, Shift Command T, or you can go to Type and then choose Tabs. So we get this window here. And I'm going to extend it just to show you that it has a ruler and it is in the same units as your document. And it's also the same width as the text box. So the reason it looks like only this part of the ruler is highlighted, that's where my text box ends. So the first thing we do is choose what type of tab I want. So left justified tab would sort of make columns that are left justified. Center aligned, same thing, columns that are center aligned. Right justified tab is what we are after. 
But just to mention this one, this one is a line on decimal or another specified character. This one's great if you have a list of numbers and they all have different number of places after the decimal point. This can create a nice column all lined on that decimal point. That's a bit of a different situation, so I'll cover that in another video. So I'm going to opt for my right justified tab, and then all I have to do is set it. So the ruler is here for your reference, so if, for example, you know this needs to be you know, exactly six inches regardless of the width of your text box, you can drag an arrow out here to six inches, and there we have a perfect six inch column. So we have a couple of descriptions that are a bit longer. So this one looks kind of ambiguous, like should it be aligned with that? And we have a couple that are longer. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this tab and I'm going to pull it out to the end. So it's right at the edge of my text box. Now it looks a bit cleaner and I'm happy with that. So it's important that I've left all these lines highlighted. If I accidentally clicked off of one and then changed that tab, it's only going to affect the line that I'm in. If you get this mess, that's an InDesign display error and you see that it usually resolves itself right away. So let's say I accidentally did this, how do I fix it? So I'm going to do um, a Control or Command A. And now I can see I have like two tabs in here. There's one that's sort of almost hidden under the end of the text box, that's the one I want, and now I have this one. If you have multiple tabs up in this light gray bar, you can just grab the ones you don't want, pull them up off, and they're gone. So just to show you what I have here, I'm going to close this window, tap the W key so I can see. Uh, missed another price there, I forgot to delete. So we've got our prices all nice and lined up perfectly on the side. It is sometimes hard to read across. And of course, there are many design options for this. You could put like a paragraph shading behind this. Um, you know, you could use a bit more space in between items. For this, I have a space before on my items. So the other thing that we can do, since we're talking about tabs, is put a leader in. So I'm going to go back and select all of this and bring my tabs window back up. And I need to make sure that I select that little tab arrow that I've dragged out there. So I'm going to click on that, make sure there's a blue box around my little right justified tab arrow. And then in the leader box, I'm going to type a period. And then if you just hit the tab key, you'll see that applied. So if this looks too dark, you could always use a character style and make it a lighter font. The other thing you could do is type a space after the period in your leader box and they'll be spaced out a bit. Sometimes that's enough to lighten it up. You can also insert other things in this box. So we're used to seeing periods. It works well. They follow the baseline. It's great for the eye. I mean, you can insert um, a bullet. So on a Mac, you type that with option eight and then I'll put a space in there. And now I've got a row of bullets. Um, you could do a dash, and I'll also put a space in there just so you can see it more clearly. All of these are options that are available. You just want to make sure that the leader is helping your reader and not distracting them. It shouldn't add too much texture to the page. So I'm going to go back to a period in space, tap the tab key to get out of that box, and then I'm going to click off so I can actually see what happened. So I'm happy with this. I can now easily follow these across good times. So I'm going to undo these things. And now I'll cover this as part of paragraph styles. So it starts the same way. I need to make sure that if I turn my hidden characters on, I need to make sure I've got those tabs typed in there. So that's the point of going back to. So I have the tabs in every line where they need to be. And now I can get started. So this top line, the paragraph style is called item names. So this is still in that paragraph, even though I have a character style on it that changes it appear its appearance. So I'm going to click in any of these item names. 
I'm going to make sure that that style is selected and I'm going to double click on it over here. If I double click on, on the name, it's just going to let me change the name. So I'm going to move over a bit and I'll double click. And then I go down to my tab section. And now the process is really similar. You can click on the arrow and drag it over. And there I can see the end of my text box, the exact same symbol. I'll select a right justified tab, place it out here at the end. I'll define my leader as a period and a space. And because I have the preview checked, I can see this all happening as I go. So I'll type the, tap the tab key to apply that. And now I've got exactly what I had before. So now this is stored in my paragraph style. When I continue on with this menu and apply styles, it's automatically going to have the tabs ready. So for example, if I went to a new section and I type or copy and paste in a new item, I can apply my styles. This will be description. I have to remove the character style from this. I'm good. I'm going to cut the price, paste it after the name, highlight that, and apply the character style. And then I'm going to select that space and type tab to replace it. And it automatically goes right over because this line or paragraph, which is InDesign's point of view that it's a paragraph, already has my paragraph style on it that has the tabs embedded. So as soon as I type a tab in that line, it's going to apply those settings that we made. So that's how to use tabs in InDesign inside and outside of paragraph styles. It's a very powerful tool with a lot of different uses, and it's great for things like menus and directories of information.